Hello everybody and welcome to another lecture in computer architecture. Today I will show you how to use inline assembly in a C environment. So let's get started. In the last lecture I showed you this example about how to use here for instance this printf how to use a C library functions inside your assembly code. So that means that um, this printf, for instance, which is very useful, you just want to print something and you don't want, uh, want to write uh, the entire code in assembly for uh, printing because that has already been done by other people. So why not make use of it? So we use the C library printf. The thing is that we have to do, we will call it here, call, we call the function, but of course we didn't write it in our code, but that, that doesn't matter. We already know how to use libraries in uh, C. So what do we have to do? We have to say, that this is an external function. And then while this is being assembled, this program, it will just ignore it and say like, oh, for the moment I don't have this code, but the linker will then uh, link my file to a code that has this printf function. So uh, what was this doing? Just to remember, it loaded the uh, address of, um, of the string into a uh, register uh, RDI and then the length and so on and it puts then this uh, call to printf of the C library and then it will put uh, it also printed an int 123 by the function printf and then at the end it was doing a syscall uh, number 3c which apparently then is um, then end of program. And we have here the data segment. This was the code segment here. And we have the data segment. So what we have to do now, we can see here, we have to compile the program. That is to say, assemble the program. We're talking about assembler. So we're assembling the program minus FELF64, 60-bit, 64-bit uh, model. I don't know, my keyboard is going something wrong. Uh, 64, and then print, this program was called print ASM. And as you can see, now I have an object. In this object, I have my functions, but it is missing the external functions like um, printf. So how we can do this? We could use the G uh, linker, the GNU linker. But what we're going to do is we just use the G compiler, which also has the linker incorporated. And as we have seen, now we have to do no pi print dot o. So now it is actually it is uh, linking my program with the rest with the C library. Very nice. So I have here now an output file which I can run and I run this with a dot out and as you can see it will say it will print here hello world. It will print this text which is that is here and it will print the int uh, 123 using the printf. Uh, function of C. So what I want to do today is exactly the opposite. I want to use uh, assemble, assembly uh, code inside a C program. So that is exactly the opposite and I have, uh, I have done that here. The thing is that you can do this quite easily but you have to do every instruction you have to put in an ASM and then in brackets. So for instance here I have put the code ASM move RAX uh, comma rsp minus 20 and I will come in a moment uh, what this means but the idea is that you just write assembly code and then put it inside ASM brackets uh, like this. So what this program is doing well now it's a uh, um, funny situation this program what I want to do I just wanted to do some multiplication I want to receive here an integer x I have a local variable uh, i and just for this uh, for this example, I also use two uh, global variables. We have learned that we should not use global variables, but I use it here anyway to show you uh, how they are different from local variables. Because if I want to use a, a global variable like this uh, int a and b, then in this case I have to ref reference them in my assembly by um, this construction that is putting them into square brackets, meaning the contents of the uh, address that is uh, this variable a. So what do I get here? I get the value the, uh, of the global variable a. In the same way, the global variable 
uh, B. It has an address, which is here reference, which is B. And then between in brackets, uh, square brackets, then I have the contents of the address of variable B. What do I do with this? Well, I place it in uh, register CX. The difference with these global variables and local variables is that local variables, as you can see, they are on the stack. They're not on the heap like this. So they don't have a normal address. They have an address on the stack. And to show you here, when I enter a function, in this case, the function is uh, foo, then it puts two uh, variables on the stack. That is x, and I put here the local variable i. Uh, so everything is then relative to the stack. The local variable i is at address of uh, stack pointer minus four. And uh, that is, uh, of course, four bits. We have four bytes is this, uh, this int. And then a little bit strange maybe, but uh, I, it took me a little bit uh, time to find out where, where my other variable, local variable x is. But that one was at the stack pointer minus 20. I just tried and then I found out that this, that this is minus 20. I think I expected it at minus 8 because it is the one before i and i was uh, 4 bytes. So I also expected x to be 4 bytes, therefore at minus 8. But it's minus 20. I think it has got to do with uh, memory alignment. But it doesn't matter. So now I found out where it is, what this program then is doing. It's putting the contents of this address of x, so that is the value of x, on rax. Then it's putting the contents of the local variable, that is 4, on, uh, of i on uh, in the register rcx. Then it's multiplying this uh, rex by rcx and uh, placing the result in rax. So now rax is having the value i times x. Then I multiply it with a in this way. So now uh, rax has a times i times x, and I multiply it with b. So now the variable, the register rax has the value of b times a times i times x. Well, it's just an example. I will put the code at, um, at the comments so that you can load it yourself and try it yourself. Look at it, and then you will uh, find how, how nice actually this is actually that it makes sense. So at the end, in rax, uh, I have this, the result of this calculation, and that is actually then my return value. It had to return an int, and this int had to be placed in rax. So now, effectively, what I'm doing is return rax, which is the result of this calculation. And mind you, now I would expect to get here an assembler code of red return, so return from a subroutine. But I should not do this because then this code actually will not clean up nicely my stack. It will just return without cleaning up the stack, and then I will get a stack overflow or underflow error or something like this. It will completely mess it up, and we will get, get here a segmentation fault. Now, the other program what is doing here the same is uh, um, avoid a non-returning, nothing returning um, subroutine. That is then just printing uh, the, a text that is pointed to by um, this pointer Q. So what it is doing, I found out that this pointer then is at the stack pointer minus 8. So what it is doing, like the other program, remember, just look, listen to or look at the video before where I explained how to uh, write hello world using assembly. So this was done by putting the uh, address of what to print in RSI, then putting one in RAX. I think this one was the standard output and the other one was... Uh, I don't, well, I don't remember anymore. And this was the, the length of the string I want to print, and then it's a syscall. Okay, so this one is printing the, a string with the pointer then uh, to the string in Q, which is at stack pointer minus 8. So this program, what is doing, it's loading 10 into this global variable A, it is loading B into variable a global variable B, and then it is uh, doing a function call to my foo with argument 3. So argument 3 is then at the value of x, and that is at uh, stack pointer minus 20 uh, places. Um, then it's doing the calculation, so it's doing uh, 3 times 4, that's 12, times a, that is 10, that's 120, times b, that is 2, so the output is uh, 230, returned in a uh, rax. Uh, this rax that the function returns is then attributed to y, so y is also an int, it gets a value of 240, and uh, this return value then is printed. Oh, and in the meantime, it's now printing 
uh, my hello world because the P is a sharp pointer, character pointer, uh, and that character pointer is passed to my print string. Now let's see if this works what I'm saying. So I have to say GCC minus no pi minus, now I have to say MASM is Intel. I want the Intel language ASM.C. Uh, it's my keyboard again. It's, I think but the battery of my keyboard is, is uh, empty. Never mind. Um, so I compile this and I can now also run my program, which is a.out. And as you see, hello world, it's printing here, print string, hello world, and uh, foo has returned the value indeed. Foo has returned the value y is equal to 240. So in this way, I show you how to use um, inline assembler inside your uh, C program. And that concludes the four ways how you can use assembler in C or mixed or independent. Of course, you learned already how to use uh, C programming, I uh, presume. Uh, then we learned here how to write code in assembly. Then we learned how to uh, use C code um, functions inside assembly and today we learned how to use uh, assembly code inside your C program. So that basically concludes uh, x86 uh, assembly uh, lectures here today. So see you in the next lecture.